Hey everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I'm going to be answering a very common question for you guys. Uh, how did I get into figs and why do I grow figs? We're going to be answering both of those for you guys right now. So how I got into figs is actually quite simple. It's really not that interesting of a story, but uh, uh, I work in the basement and my basement got flooded one year. So we had a nice moldy smell and having to put up with that wasn't the most pleasant thing. So what I did was some digging around in the internet. I came across on Google that some houseplants could actually purify the air. And I've always had some kind of weird affinity with plants. I've always, I always wished I had a green thumb. I always wished that I, I uh, had an orchard. I wish, I thought it was the coolest thing to have an orchard because it just seems so magical in a way, so majestic. So uh, there's just something about it. I don't know if majestic or magical really is the best word. There really is just something about it that uh, it just strikes me. And having rows of whatever it is, apple trees, grapevines, whatever it is, there's always just some feeling that I get when I'm in those places of calm, peace. I don't know. I've always had a weird affinity for trees too. I, as a kid, was always fascinated by trees. I never was a, a super nerd into nature, but um, you know, I always had this weird uh, connection to trees for some reason. I always had an interest, right? So, growing house plants was uh, seemed like something I could definitely be a part of, and I started growing all these house plants. I got a couple to begin with, and they did really well. I uh, I they, I could I kept them alive, <laughs> right? They lived, <laughs> and then they started growing, and I was like, oh my god, this is great. And then because I was babying them so much, they started to get fungus gnats. I overwatered them too much. I babied them too much. I said, you know what? I'm not going to let these things die. I'm going to keep watering them and not forget and make sure that I'm responsible. And as a result, the fungus gnats showed up. I learned all about fungus gnats and what I needed to do to get rid of them. I, I went through crazy lengths of adding in hydrogen peroxide and uh, all kinds of crazy things. I took... I ended up taking all kinds of soil that I got at the store and putting that in a bin and then microwaving that in the bin to kind of kill any any pathogens or anything in there. Uh, what a huge what a huge mess that was and mistake that was. But essentially, um, I got enough house plants and I was getting really good at that. And I got to the point where I was saying to myself, "Why am I growing house plants? They don't give me anything other than something that just looks nice." It's nice to be around, right? It gives some extra humidity into the air. It certainly does purify the air, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. If you get enough enough plants in one location in a room, uh, you feel like you're in a jungle. It's great. It's a wonderful feeling. Um, so, you know, me being like that and saying, well, I'm not getting anything back. Why don't I try to grow something that will fruit for me or give me something in return in terms of food? Why don't I try to grow food? And the first thing I could think of was figs because I thought to myself, what is the one thing that I can't get at the store? It's quite expensive and one thing that I really enjoy. And that was figs because my grandfather who got me into figs probably was the biggest source of inspiration. He's very Italian. He had a tree when he was uh, younger, uh, when he was an adult. He took care of that all throughout his life in New Jersey and Philadelphia. Um, and he's even growing figs now in Florida and he's always, you know, brought figs to me in terms of dried figs for a long, for most of my life, I'd never had a, a fresh fig, but I always loved dried figs, but they're always so expensive and hard to find. And the quality isn't all that great. And my grandfather would always tell me, you know, just how amazing a fresh fig is. Uh, same thing with my father. They're, they're all in love with them. Um, so I said, you know what, let's grow them. Let's get a couple fig trees from uh, the internet and see if we can get them here. And that's what we did. We got a couple trees from Wellspring Gardens. They were tissue culture plants. They arrived and they were like seven inches tall. I mean, they're just the smallest little things. I don't know how I got them through the winter time. And then I put them outside in the spring and I had about, uh, you know, five to nine trees by the end of my first season. Um, I even bought one at Home Depot to kind of speed the process up and I was well on my way to growing figs. So that's 
that's kind of it. I guess a funny story I could tell you guys is that my grandfather one year got cuttings from my uncle's tree and took out these large branches and stuck them in the ground. I thought he was crazy. Put them in the backyard, stuck them in random places, uh, just in hopes that they would take. And they never took because my dad came around and ripped them out of the ground wondering what the hell are these sticks doing in the ground. So, but little did we know that that would actually work and something that I've actually done myself, the old man ways of, atta of uh, propagating fig cuttings. Just sticking a stick in the ground. Um, so back to the second part of this video, uh, why do I grow figs? Well, I guess part of it, it's in my family, it's in my blood, it's something that I really enjoy. But there are some very obvious reasons, guys, and you can see it very clearly here right in front of me. Um, these figs are very different from each other. You know, there's a, quite a bit of variability in shape, size, color, flavor. We talked a lot about flavor here and the flavor, um, the flavor descriptions that I've listed here in my spreadsheet. Also in the videos that I've talked about, talking about the different flavors of figs and how quite distinct they are. You know, not so much the same as like something like a Gala apple versus a Fuji apple, right? The differences are are not very much whereas figs they're quite distinct some of them are very very different from each other and um, I think that adds another element of something that just makes this a lot more interesting um, another reason and I think the biggest reason why is again going back to the store they're expensive they're hard to find and if you were to find fresh figs at the store the quality is abysmal the quality is pathetic um, they're picked early, so if you have a tree of your own and you were to get figs on that tree and you were to let them ripen and you were to pick them at the absolute most ripe they could be, let's say that's 100%, right? 100% ripe, that's where it is. 0% would be like inedible, right? The store, and what they do is these commercial growers, they purposely pick them at about 60%. And that way they have the color, they have the size, they have a decent amount of sugar, but the flavor is just not there because every single day a fig hangs on the tree makes a huge, huge difference. So by, those, by them not allowing that fig to ripen for the last 40%, they're robbing you guys. You don't even know what a fig tastes like if you've only eaten store-bought figs. I'm sorry. Uh, it's true. There is just uh, a huge difference between store-bought and homegrown. And it goes for the same thing with just about every fruit and vegetable I've grown. There is a difference between the store and what you can accomplish at home. Some things are obviously not worth it, right? Um, you know, cherries as an example. I find that store-bought cherries are actually quite similar in quality to what I'm able to grow myself. So those are not really worth it to me. Um, apples. You know, there's a little bit of mysticness in those, I guess, if that's a word. A lot of people love growing apples, and they're certainly better when you grow them at home, but the quality in the store is definitely um, pretty good. If you can find good apples at the store, you can definitely get good apples, right? I mean, you can definitely find good pears. You can definitely find good of certain things, but you have to look hard. You have to know where to get them. And for the most part, anything you grow is going to be better than it is bought at the store um, and some things like I said are just not worth it um, but the fig is worth it so much so because in addition to it just being better in terms of taste and quality than a store it's just something very easy to grow why should I grow something that's a lot of trouble that's a lot of work even though figs are a subtropical species and I live in more of a temperate climate we get to zero degrees Fahrenheit here every year you know, it, it, it's totally worth it because the fig is completely unbothered by just about everything. There's very little disease pressure. There's very little pest pressure. There's very little anything that bothers it other than probably a fruit fly and critters like birds and squirrels. That's it. So um, for me, that's completely problem free and something I don't really have to worry about. You know, you kind of plant it there and it's done. You don't have to care for it. Um, whereas something like apples or stone fruits or pears, 
they certainly need a lot more attention. Why? Because they're more prone to, to disease. The disease can kill the trees, spread to other trees, kill those trees. You can have pests that will completely rot in the fruit, uh, multiply in huge numbers, and completely ruin your fruit growing experience. And if you're not willing to spray here and there at the right time, um, it's a lot more work. And for me, certain things in this climate are just worth growing other than others, like uh, persimmons, jujubes, mulberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, figs. I mean, these are mostly things that are completely unbothered. Paw Paw is another one. Here in my Zone 7 climate, they're completely unbothered by everything other than birds and squirrels and fruit flies. So they seem like no-brainers, and really anyone can grow those and achieve a high-quality fruit. Um, so that's a big reason, right? Um, it was in my family. Just to recap, it was in my family. Um, you know, uh, you can't get them in the store. They're expensive. The quality is way better if you grow them yourself. And they're easy to grow. Um, so the, the list goes on and on and on. I could, I could give you probably a million reasons if I had, if I had enough time to sit here and think about it. But, you know, um, I think at this point, you guys kind of get the gist. I mean, there is a, a huge variety of flavor. There's a huge amount of reward that goes into this, a lot of excitement that goes into this, a lot of time that you've spent propagating this yourself. It's kind of like starting your plants from seed, but instead you're starting a cutting, letting it grow roots, letting it grow leaves, and you got a full-fledged tree, and it just seems a bit more rewarding that way, right? You spent all this time, it's probably been in your family for a long time, right? There's a lot of family heirlooms out there that have been growing for years that maybe it was your great-grandfather's fig and you're now growing it yourself. Um, you know, it's just something special. So uh, that is why I grow figs, guys, and that is how I got into figs. I hope that one was enjoyable for you all. I know it wasn't the most enjoyable and the most um, interesting story, but... It really all started with a flood in my basement. <laughs> so anyway, guys, take care, and I'll catch you off in the next one.